Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 6, Lesson 5, describing trends and scatter plots. Let's look for associations between variables. So, first of all, we have four graphs here, and it wants to know which one doesn't belong. Now, you can look at all four of them, and spend some time looking at them, and you'll probably notice something different about each of them for why maybe each one doesn't belong with the others. So take a moment with the class of class and take a look at that and see what do you think. Okay? All right, coming back in here. Here we go. Things I noticed, things I'm wondering about. Maybe which one doesn't belong. This one seems to be the only one with what kind of a slope? The slope here is a positive slope. That's the only one with a positive slope there. So maybe that's why it doesn't belong. Right, we have two with a negative slope, so mm, that's not gonna be a big deal there. This one though, notice the axis here is at zero. This one only is the only one with a negative y coordinates right nothing else everything else doesn't go to zero but this one has negative ones so that's different there on this one we can see that the points are spread out right nothing is really near where it needs to be and so the line is there but whatever the values are they're all spread out in different places they don't seem to be near the line as well as they should be and this last one of course there's no line there's no line of fit. There's no line that says, what, where is this going? So maybe that's why it doesn't belong. Again, no right or wrong answer, just helping you kind of see things and think through what do you notice. Now, it says your teacher is going to give you a piece of pasta and a straight edge. I don't have the pasta with me. Sorry about that. Here are two copies of the same scatter plot. Experiment with drawing lines to fit the data. Pick the line that you think best fits the data. So the idea here is just to kind of draw some lines and pick a line you think fits the best. So perhaps you're using just a ruler and you take a ruler and say, well, I want to make a ruler go somewhere in between all that. And it's best to kind of look at how do I split it right down the middle, so to speak. And so you pick a point where you realize that's about middle and you draw a line right on through that and you say, well, there is my line of best fit, something along those lines there. This is the same exact graph, so you can do the same thing again, kind of adjust a little bit. But the idea is to come up with some sort of line that makes the most sense because it goes with that data right there. And you put that essentially somewhere in the middle of all the data points. Again, think about that hot dog. That's the hot dog bun. You want the hot dog to be in the middle of the bun, not falling off the bun. Okay? So get some practice doing that as well. And number two, here's another one, two copies of the same one. And it says experiment with uh, drawing lines of fit uh, for the data. Check with your partner and see what you come up with. Again, this is just where you want to take a look at and say, well, where do I want this to go? I could put it here, I could put it here. But wherever I draw that line, it's going to have an impact on the, the slope of that line. But the guy, again, the idea is to put it somewhere where it's about in the middle of everything. That's what you're looking for there. So maybe I just draw it like this. And I say, yeah, that's about middle-ish. I got a couple points here. I have some below, I have some above. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, kind of below it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven above it. So I have seven above it. I have eight below it. So that's pretty close, right? I end up with one, two, three, four, five, pretty much on the line itself. That's a pretty good drawing there. I could definitely do something different. Now, if I did a line like this and said, well, I like this line. Maybe I went through here, okay? And I made a line like that. Well, this would mean that these guys are near the line. And what does that create by making that my line of fit? It creates some outliers here, doesn't it? Because now these guys just don't really belong with the rest of it. They don't fit in. They seem to fit in okay with this one. If I made this my line, I made that my hot dog bun, they seem to fit in. But once I make my line that angle, it changes which ones seem to belong and which ones don't. So. In your own words, why don't you describe what makes a line fit in a data set well? What does it make a line fit? Okay, things I notice here that make a line fit. It seems to pass through the middle of most of the points. Okay, it definitely has a show a slope that shows the trend, whether it be in positive or negative way there. And most of the points are all close to the line. If it's going to be a line of good fit, those are the things that I notice there. So pass through, passes through the middle of the points. There's one thing there. Has a slope 
that shows the trend, positive or negative. And we would say points are close to the line. That's the other thing we would notice there as well. All right, let's move to activity number three, called good fit, bad fit. The scatter plot show, uh, plots both show the year and price for the same 17 used cars. However, each scatter plot shows a different model for the relationship, right? So the line is in a different place, okay? So you can see how by moving that line, it changes how you view that data. So let's look at uh, diagram A. Here's A. For how many cars does the model in diagram A make a good prediction of its price? So that good prediction are going to be what? The ones that are going to be near the, um, you know, near the line. So it depends on how you want to look at this here. If you want to kind of be real picky, you could say, well, let's make a really skinny hot dog bun like this. And we can say, oh, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six are near it. That might be good. Depends on how big of a bun you want to have. How many cars does the model underestimate the price? Underestimate the price means that it cost more. Cost price, it costs more. If I underestimate the price, I'm under the actual price. So this one here costs $18,000 and it was predicted to be more like $14,000. So it underestimated, right? It ended up being more than it thought it would be. So how many are basically are above the line? This is our under estimated. We would say one, two, three, four, based upon where I drew my hot dog bun in my circle. For how many cars does it overestimate? Well, we could have one, two, three, four, five, and maybe not six and seven, something like that. Okay? Again, just an estimate of what how I drew mine and what I did. Yours could be a little different, and that's okay. We're just estimating. For B, same idea. It says how many cars does the model diagram B make a good prediction of its price? So if we're going to look at this one, again, we draw the same type of line. Let's keep with the same size hot dog bun as the other one. If I keep the hot dog bun about the same, what do I have? Mm, maybe one, <laughs> right? It might be a good predictor for one car. And I kind of bumped that one, but still. How many does it underestimate? So this is overestimate. This is underestimate. Under over. So how many did we underestimate? One, two, three. And how many did it overestimate? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wow, that's not very good at all, is it? So this is not a very good line of fit. Otherwise we have more that are kind of close by it. For how many cars does the prediction made by model A differ by th more than three thousand dollars? So we're looking for then, looking at these the predictions here, which ones have a line or a distance from the line greater than the distance of three thousand dollars? Now three thousand dollars is one grid line. Nine to twelve is three thousand. So you have to take a look at which one is more than three thousand away. That is more than a grid line away. This one is more than a whole grid line away. So is this one. It's also more than a whole grid line away. This one is a whole grid line away. Can I go this way? That's half to, eh, not quite, so probably not that one. And this one, halfway, and no, that's a little bit more. I would definitely go with one, two, three, four. I don't know if it definitely, but I'd say at least four. In a Model B, which one are more than a grid line away? Well, that one is one, two, three, definitely four. Um, we would say five and six. And this we would say seven, maybe eight. That's okay. That one is maybe okay. So maybe about eight, maybe something like that. Again, just estimating how many are going to be there uh, that were over. So they un over predicted or under predicted by over $3,000 in four of the first model and an eight of the second model. So that means it's pretty off. This one is definitely the model that's just way off from what the actual prices were wouldn't want to use as a model. So which one is the better job of, of predicting, which is question four? We would say diagram A, model A, does a better job for predicting the cost of 
the car. Practicing fitting lines. Is this line a good fit for the data and explain your reasoning? Okay, so we're looking at each one. Does this data line fit pretty well? Well, again, looking at your hot dog bun, we would say that there's a lot that don't fit right there. So I would say that no, there's too many below the line, right? That's a problem. We have too many that are outside of the line range. They're not close by it. It says draw a line that fits the data better. Well, to do that, we'd want to kind of put one about the middle of all those dots, which might look something like this. So we draw a line that goes somewhere down the middle like that. That looks a little better. Now, it's a definitely a broader hot dog bun like so, but it definitely captures more, and we're only leaving about three out, whereas over here we left a whole bunch out over there. So again, not a perfect thing, just what you think, okay? How about this one? Is this line a good fit for the data? And explain your reasoning. Hmm. Well, with this line here, it's, you might think, well, it's kind of close, like, right? Like, it got those ones there and those ones there if you make a hot dog bun like that. But really, there's a lot that are over and a lot that are under. Let's see what happens if you can just tilt this down a little bit. What can you do? Well, let's try it. What if I take this line and try to go through the middle of both those pockets of dots and end up something right about here? Now what happens? What happens to my, my hot dog bun? I can have a nice narrow hot dog bun and include almost every single dot there and it's definitely a tighter hot dog bun, right? It's going to work a little bit better there. So my line is more of a, of a, it's a better fit because my dots are much closer to it. It's the same dots, but what do we do? We tilted the line down a little bit so you had a different slope in order to grab more of those dots and say that they're closer to it. Okay? So, you can do the same thing with some more. We have an are you ready for more section. Again, you can practice drawing a line of best fit for these. This one's pretty clear what a line of best fit would look like, something like that. For this guy, again, you look about the middle and go, well, maybe somewhere like there would be a line of best fit. And this one, if you put one somewhere through here, I mean, this is this one's a little weird. Just hard to work with that one, isn't it? It's just not a great one there. Easy to find a line there, okay, and pretty challenging. I mean, I don't know what you do there. You can make one that goes this way for that one if you wanted to. That's an, it's just harder to do on one like this. It's not as clear, okay? So, in summary, when a linear function fits data well, we say there's a linear association when it fits the data well. There's a linear association between the variables. So we can see that here, there's a linear association between the variables when the variables all seem to fit on that line. Now, when the slope of the line is positive, meaning it's going up this way, it's positive slope, it's a positive association. When the data fits well and the slope is negative, it's a negative association. This is a negative slope, it's a negative association, like the fuel efficiency and weight of a car. So those are some examples there. We're going to pause there, give you a chance to work on your homework, and we'll come back and check those together in just a few moments. All right, unit six, lesson five. Describing trends and scatter plots, draw a line that you think, you think, is a good fit for this data. Uh, for this data, the inputs are the horizontal values, the outputs are the vertical values, so find a line of best fit. Again, you probably wanna think about how do I get right about the middle of all this and draw that line right through the middle of it all, something along those lines there. Again, it's just an estimate of what you think is gonna work, okay? And based on, use your line of fit to estimate what would you expect the output value to be when the input is 10. Now the input is the horizontal. So when I look at 10, I would expect the output to be here, which means I'm going across this way. And I'm counting, I got 30, kind of by 15 there. So this is somewhere maybe about 32, 33, somewhere in that range there is what the output would be. Something like that, okay? Number two. Here's a scatter plot that shows the most popular videos in a 10-year span. Ten year span. All right, most popular. Use the scatter plot to estimate the number of views for the most popular video. Okay, well, which one was most popular? So here's the views. Which one of the most views is right here? And if we're gonna estimate how many views that is, we're gonna go across this way. 
Okay, and we're going to be right here. It looks like we're counting up by about 0.75 for each little section. So if you think about this being broken up into 0.75, that becomes 3, or sorry, this becomes uh, not 0.75, yeah, 0.75. Something's a little funny there, isn't it? Yeah, we're okay. Um, so that means that we're counting here at 0.25. So this is going to be 2.50 and 2.75 and 3. So we'd say probably about 2.75 billion views. Way to go. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if my YouTube channel videos had 2.75 billion? I'd be like famous. Wow, crazy. Estimate when the fourth most popular video was released. Okay, so when was it released? I'm looking for the date. Fourth most popular, we have one, two, three, four. Look for the date. The date comes down here, and we can see it is before January of 2015. So we would say late 2014, because it's for 2015, so maybe December, or November of 2014 would be probably when that was released there. All right, let's take a look at the last one, which is a review question, number three. A recipe for bread calls for one teaspoon of yeast for every two cups of flour. Name two coins in situation that are functional relationship. Our two quantities are going to be yeast and flour. We're going to write an equation and draw the graph with at least two points. Now there are two ways of doing this depending upon which one you want to use as your x and which one you want to use as your y. Let's say I made yeast and flour like so. Could also do flour and yeast. It really doesn't make a difference for what we're doing here. Okay? So if yeast is one teaspoon and flour is two, if I was to double it, I'd have two and I'd have four. Over here, if yeast is two, or flour is two and yeast is one, I'm gonna cut it in half. Oh, well, actually, in this case here, if I double this one, I'm at two and then I'm at four, still doubling it. Okay? Now, as an equation, I have y equals my constant proportionality times x, or y equals kx, or my slope, however you want to think about that. And the k is found, remember, by looking at what is y over x. In this case, y over x is 2, because I have 2 over 1 equals 2. So I could say y equals 2 times x. Over here, my y over x is going to be k equals y over x, which is 1 over 2, so k equals a half. So y equals 1 half x. Just doing both at the same time, okay? Just depends on which one you want to use there. So now when I graph this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I could have yeast over here on the x value and flour here. And over here I could put flour and I can do yeast. In this one, I have a 1, 2, 1, 2, and 2, 4. So that's this chart. And over here, I have flour at 2 and yeast at 1, and then flour at 4 and yeast at 2. And so it looks like this. So that's what those equations would look like when I graph them out. Very different equations, but we have different equations and very different graphs as well but they both work and they both make sense. Depends on which one you want to say is a function of which. Okay, um, and that's it for today. Hope you have a great day and we will see you next time.